that you uh, have to finish the presentation. under the safety levels and also it has to work in emergency condition where it has to control smoke propagation, it has to ensure safe evacuation as well as safe fire fighting activities. So it, the regulation of flow within a tunnel is dependent on the combined influence of many parameters. First of all, <coughs> for sure the ventilation devices, so, so the number of, of fun, their power and uh, also the tunnel layout affect the final ventilation flow in a tunnel with the, with the geometry, with the, the presence of slope, eventually the friction coefficient, the presence of shaft. Uh, the boundary condition at the portal, so wind, pressure on both the portals and also on the top of the chimney. Also the presence of blockages within the domain affect the final ventilation flow as well as the fire size and location. When we talk about tunnel, we talk of huge computational domain. So if we think of modeling the whole tunnel domain using CFG model, the number of grid points, grid, grid sets can go up to many, many millions. And uh, we also have a problem for short tunnel, like 1.4 km long tunnel. If, if we think of the Alps tunnel, like more than 10 km long, the problem are really complicated. When we talk about tunnel, we have to know that we have to deal with ventilation devices, we have to know how to model the jet fan, we have to deal with the boundary condition that can vary during, the, 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 during our simulation. We have to deal with shaft, so we should know the boundary condition, the temperature on the top of the shaft. And we have to know that within the tunnel we can have blockages like cars, like trucks, like in the worst case scenario traffic jam, and we should know how to deal with the complex network of ventilation ducts, above all for the transverse ventilation, uh, ventilated tunnel. And we have to deal with the fire with the, with the sites and location. So we can use different modeling techniques to deal with this kind of problem. The, the easy, the simpler one is to use a network model. So the assumption under this kind of model is that all the dynamic quantities like velocity, temperature, or density are constant across the section. <coughs> Here we have an example. We have a small tunnel with a four jet fans, two shafts. We can think of building a network of pipes representing the geometry. And after calibrating, uh, calibrating all the constants, and for example, represent the, fan, the, the fans like uh, pumps and the shaft like branches within my network, I can completely forget of the older structure and can work with this kind of model. Obviously, the simulation are really fast and usually people use this kind of model for design purposes. A negative aspect is that this kind of model cannot deal with the fluid region where the, the flow is not, uh, is not uniform. So uh, stratification and plume cannot be treated properly using this kind of model. Obviously, uh, I have to build my computational uh, grid I have to, uh, to write momentum conservation equation for each branch, the mass conservation equation for each node, and I have to solve the system. One important thing that if, when I put a pump within my network, I have to know how this pump behaves. So I have to know the, the, the constitutive equation for each component. On the other side, I can use brute force. So I can use CFD. I model my whole tunnel using CFD approach. and. Obviously, the, 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 the amount of data I can get from this calculation is really high, but the computational time is also high. And this kind of approach becomes practical if we want to um, analyze the whole tunnel or we want to uh, make a um, comprehensive analysis of ventilation strategies. <coughs> so, uh, what people do is 
if, if they have a really long tunnel, they take just a small portion of the tunnel, like, I don't know, one kilometer long or a few hundred meters long. They're supposed to know the ventilation condition on one side, and they do the simulation. This kind of approach uh, produces an uncovering between fire and ventilation system because they don't know if the fire and with different sites can affect the final ventilation condition in my, in my computational domain with the tunnel with a given ventilation system. What we propose here is to use a two-scale model. What does it mean? If we look at the typical velocity contour in the presence of jet fan or in the typical temperature contour in the presence of fire, we can clearly see that there are regions where the flow, despite the fact there are disturbances, the flow is still behaving one dimensionally. So if we, uh, we use a network model and try to model it, our results are good. But if we look in the middle, where the disturbances produced by, produced by the fan or produced by the fire are really high, obviously we need a more, a more powerful tool like CFP model in order to model properly the flow, the flow behavior in this region. So in the end, what we see is that for the one-dimensional region where the flow it has low velocity and low temperature gradients, we can use clearly the more dimensional model. On the other side, if, if, if the flow is behaving in a complex, uh, in a complex, in co complex fashion, we have to use a more powerful tool, CFT model. What we do here is to, once we isolate the region where we use the CFT tool, we do many simulations. We try to collect our results and try to represent them in terms of back flow quantities. What are back flow quantities? Like average velocity across the section, average pressure across the section. Once we collect all the data, we build characteristic curves. And we use these characteristic curves as additional information to be introduced in the one-dimensional model. So at the end, the, the computational time is much, much more, it's much, much lower. Um, this kind of model can be successfully used for parametric studies. And uh, obviously, the setup time, the time we need to build the curve is higher. But we can try to use them and try to understand if the fire with this side dimension, with this size and location, can affect the final ventilation condition within our tunnel. What we need is to take a 1.2 kilometer long tunnel that is uh, longitudinal ventilated and um, with 14 pairs of jet fan. They are 15 meters spaced and they have a, 13, a discharge a velocity of 34 meters per second. And uh, now we suppose that the fire is located in the middle and uh, the fire size is ranged from 10 megawatts up to 15 megawatts. This work that has been modeled like a, a rectangular structure in the middle of the tunnel that releases um, hot gases from the top and a train called air from, from the side. The dimension of this obstruction has been scaled using fruit scaling. We saw that there are regions where the flow is behaving three-dimensional. So in, for this region, we need CFT tools. What we need is the fan region we model using as a, as a, CFD, as a CFD approach. After some CFD simulation, we saw that if I have a tunnel and I have a series of operating jet fans, the flow is behaving almost in a periodic way. So if we want to look at the interaction between, interaction between fans, we can try to build a, a, the, our periodic domain, in this case that was 50 meter, uh, it was 50 meter long, and to enforce periodic boundary condition at, between the, 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 the beginning and the end of our region. Once we uh, build our model, we, we did many simulations and we reconstruct the final uh, the, the results in terms of back flow quantities. In this case, we had pressure rise and average velocity through the domain. And we got a curve like this one. So in my network model, any time I have a fan, I know that the behavior of this fan has to be like that one. 